What's up, guys? In the works, and yes, an in-game review. You're probably like, oh, man, this is a, this is a long time coming. Uh, in-game's been out forever. How are you just now reviewing it? Well, anytime a new DLC or expansion comes out, I like to wait until it's out on every platform, you know, premium, non-premium, etc., before I actually do my review of it. And I wanted to spend an ample amount of time with in-game to kind of learn the ins and outs of this particular DLC. Because in order to give a fair and balanced look, yeah, to quote Fox News, you need to spend an ample amount of time with it. You need to experience it, you know, how the game modes are going to play, how the maps play in certain situations. And I just couldn't feel like I could really experience that in just a limited amount of playtime. Uh, so my review is finally here. and We're going to go over some of the things I like, some of the things I don't like, some of the things that I think could have been better. Uh, but let's start off with the new vehicles. They gave us a lot of different vehicles. They gave us the dirt bikes. They gave us the anti-air Humvees and Vodniks and stuff like that. And, you know, what did they really add to the game? Well, the one thing I think that was important about the Vodnik and the Humvee anti-air vehicles was that it actually added something to protect you from a lot of the airborne vehicle spam. Because um, me being someone who really, really likes the helicopters, it's extremely hard to pilot those helicopters now. And that's for a good reason, because the experiences I had... Ooh, that guy got smushed. But the experiences I did have when the helicopters basically remained unchecked were pretty pretty brutal. They can really cause a lot of damage to a team. So it's important to have a weapon or a vehicle, I guess you should say, uh, even though it is technically a weapon like the Humvee, like the Vodnik with the anti-air, because it kind of keeps them from playing super, super aggressive. On the counterpoint, though, these, you know, these Humvees, the Vodniks, they don't have a lot of armor. They don't really have a whole lot to protect you if you get hit by an RPG, if you run over a mine. Oftentimes, if you're the passenger, you're going to die. Uh, it's as simple as that. But they are useful from getting from point A to point B as well, which is important because one of the big game modes in in-game was capture the flag. And I think they do a pretty good job of that. So I do like the new vehicles. The dirt bikes are fun. You know, there's not really a whole lot to say about the dirt bikes. A lot of people look at them and they're like, oh, they're just gimmicky. But I personally do see the usefulness in them. I don't really have a problem with them. They're in the game for capture the flag. It's really fun to pick up a flag and jet to your base. Uh, the one thing I do kind of get annoyed with is the C4 on the dirt bikes just because the hitboxes on those things are really kind of strange. Uh, and sometimes they'll survive getting hit by a rocket, and I don't really understand that. Considering that you can get killed in a Humvee by an RPG, yet you can you can survive on the dirt bike, it's kind of weird. Uh, I don't know, something's up with that. But capture the flag, I've already done a full review on that. Uh, the game modes in this weren't really anything that uh, you know shocked me. There wasn't nothing that really made it a really good <laughs> DLC for me, just because I wasn't a fan of capture the flag. I've kind of warmed up to it lately, but there's still some things that kind of nag me about it, you know, the spawning system and stuff like that, but I've already done a Capture the Flag review, so I probably won't get into that a ton in this video. But the maps themselves, that is one of the most important aspects of a DLC, because, you know, what we're paying for is essentially new maps. You know, the vehicle offerings, I was actually pleasantly surprised by them. I like the vehicle side of things in this expansion. But what do I feel about these maps? Well, overall, I think these maps are absolutely gorgeous. I think they're well-designed. Uh, I like the size of the maps. Now, the layout of the maps is a different story. I was a little underwhelmed with the way some of these maps kind of play out. Um, particular maps like this, the first set of MCOMs on Rush, don't really make sense to me. Then you have the map, the Abandoned Flats, which has absolutely no cover. And you'll see towards the end of this video, I actually have some footage from that. There's no cover on those maps. It, it just wide open you don't really have stand much of a chance i mean uh, it's all about positioning and i think that kind of deters from the experience that you're supposed to be having on these in-game maps so map design you know the way they look is awesome the layout not so much i think that was one of the most underwhelming aspects of the in-game maps uh, but i'm definitely going to give them an a for the design the look the feel of the maps i think they definitely hit a home run with that it's just the layout was a little bit underwhelming and that's a shame because the layout is really important especially in a game like battlefield um, where it's more about tactical flanking where it's more about vehicles and stuff like that and i think the layout really kind of plays into the armor kill feel that a lot of people get and I really can't do this review without mentioning Armored Kill because vehicles are a more crucial aspect in this particular expansion. Not so much as in Armored Kill. I think that you can get beyond a lot of the vehicle spam that existed in that. Uh, but you're still pretty vulnerable. I mean, there's still a lot of areas where you you don't have cover, uh, especially on the, the abandoned flats. You don't have cover. You can basically get just absolutely destroyed by attack choppers, absolutely destroyed by tanks. And the tanks don't even have to leave their spawn. 
Um, so it is kind of frustrating. And I know a lot of people tend to get into those scenarios and look at good jo good guy Jake running out of cover to go over here and repair this uh, this tank. But, you know, keeping your tanks alive are important. And I, I like that aspect of in-game. I like the vehicle and infantry balance that I feel like exists. The only thing that I really have a problem with, like I mentioned earlier, is the map layouts makes it really, really hard to kind of find cover to actually be effective as an infantry guy. Uh, and this map, I think, is a prime example of that. This is probably the my least favorite out of the entire expansion. It's definitely the weakest in my eyes on all the game modes. It's pretty bad on Capture the Flag. It's horrible on Rush. I've, I don't think I've ever played a Rush map that plays so poorly like the, the abandoned flats i mean some of the some of the points and angles that you can get shot from are just absolutely crazy and it sucks to be the attackers and it sucks to be the defenders i don't really see uh, one side having a huge advantage because if you get set up as the defenders there's no way you're going to get over this hill it's like you run over the hill and you're instantly you know people are aimed down sights uh, if you're the attackers, you know, vice versa, you can, if you get really good, you know, really good flank going on, the defenders really stand no chance because they spawn back there where there's no cover. And now the attackers have the, the buildings and stuff. So it's a definitely a two way street on this map, but it's, it's definitely the weakest of the bunch. So uh, I definitely give an abandoned flats, the thumbs down on the end game maps, but the other maps are a lot better. I think, I think they play a little bit more solid. But I still have a problem because as a Rush player, a lot of the maps don't really play um, play very well in Rush. If you're a Conquest player, I think your experience is going to be much more well-rounded, especially on all the maps. I don't, I don't think there's really a map on Conquest that I feel is the weakest. I think they all have potential on Conquest. But as far as Rush goes, where it's a frontline type game mode, a lot of the, the, the in-game maps just, they feel awkward. They feel like they're not really well designed for that. The MCOMs are placed in areas where it's either really hard to defend or really, really super hard to get. Um, as the attackers, but I mean, that's that's kind of like the armor kill state of mind, and I, I hate going back to armor kill, but I think that that's the only real true comparison I can make uh, to one of the past DLCs. Um, but if you haven't played some of these maps on Conquest, I really highly suggest it. I think they all play pretty solid on Conquest, and surprisingly enough, a lot of the maps actually play really cool on TDM. Now, I'm not a huge TDM guy if I'm just in there, you know, just wanting to have mindless fun. Every once in a while, I'll hop in TDM, but TDM is actually really cool on the abandoned flats because you get to go inside the warehouse, and it's almost like a SWAT type thing. So if you can find a low player count server, I would highly suggest trying that out. But overall, you know, in-game for me is probably the third best DLC. I think it slides in above Close Quarters and Armored Kill for me. Um, I like Close Quarters now. I think that it's a cool DLC. It's just not really the battlefield that I'm really truly looking for. But every once in a while, I do like playing it. Armored Kill is probably my least favorite. But I'm going to do a Battlefield Premium review down the line here in the next couple of weeks. So I'll talk more about that. Uh, but I think it goes Carcan, Aftermath. You know, then end game, then the rest of the DLCs for me. That's just my personal opinion. So it's definitely not the best, but I think it's solid. I definitely think it's solid. The maps play play really well in Conquest, and I've really been getting into Qu Conquest personally a lot lately, and I have enjoyed uh, my experiences on the in-game maps in Conquest. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Have you enjoyed in-game? I know it's been out for about a month now, so we've had plenty of time to really look it over. And if you missed any of my past videos, here's a chance to catch up. I actually did a video yesterday that I think everybody should check out, even if you're not a fan of Crisis 3, because uh, it's a pretty interesting conversation that I want to get your guys' opinion on. And before that, I actually did a Battlefield 4, you know, kind of info video where we talked a little bit about the uh, Naval Warfare and Female Soldiers in Battlefield 4. So check those two videos out, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.